everyone remain seated during our processional so that everyone will be able to see. We're getting ready to begin. Coming in now, we have special sit-in guests from Abyssinian Baptist Church in Newark, New Jersey. Coming in now.
Baptist Church. Macedonia Baptist Church.
Church.
are pleased and happy to have Leaden Hall Baptist Church serving as our host ushers today. Let us welcome them. Celebrate the junior ushers of Southern Baptist Church.
celebrate the senior ushers 85th anniversary. Celebrate, celebrate. Senior Usher's 85th, Junior Usher's 65th, King of them adult doorkeepers second. Celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate, church. Celebrate, celebrate.
dabbing ushers, dabbing ushers. Celebrate, church, celebrate.
And all the people said, Amen. Amen. We're here to celebrate the 85th anniversary of the Senior Ushers of Southern Baptist Church, the 65th anniversary of the Junior Ushers of Baptist Church, uh, Southern Baptist Church, and the second anniversary of the Kingdom Adult Doorkeepers. Let's give it up, make some noise for all of our ushers. And while we're praising God for them, we've got to praise God for the one and only mix master on the wheels of steel, Mary Ben. Sister Ben has been with Southern Baptist Church for 43 years. Still going strong. Can't nobody do a usher's anniversary like Mary Ben. We're going to continue in this great worship experience. I want to invite uh, our worship leader for this evening, Sheila Montgomery. Come on, clap your hands. Thank God for her. Help her up, help her up, help her up. Good afternoon, saints. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Good afternoon, saints. Good afternoon. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. As pastors already said, welcome to Southern Baptist Senior Ushers 85th, Junior Ushers 65th, and Kingdom Adult Doorkeepers second combined Ushers anniversary. That's pretty good. At this time, could everyone please stand for our congregational hymn, which is leaning on the everlasting arms. After that, we will have a scripture brought by, by Miss Ellis. After that, prayer by Sister Karen Kent. Hallelujah, what a fellowship. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift this hymn up together, everybody. Sing what a fellowship.
Good afternoon. I will be reading. I will be reading Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 9 from the New International Version. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. Father God, before we ask you for anything, we want to just thank you for everything. Father God, we just thank you for this anniversary. 152 years combined. Lord Jesus, I just asked you to just to touch every usher, every doorkeeper, everyone that came to celebrate with us today. Oh, Father God, then I ask you to bless our pastor, his family. And Father God, I just ask you to give our ushers who came to celebrate with us traveling mercies, Lord Jesus. Let them go back to their homes, Lord, and don't let it be the same, but let it be better than it was. Oh, Father God, I just thank you for calling me through this to this ministry. Lord, just let us remind us that we didn't choose the ministry you chose us and for these things i say thank you lord i ask in jesus name amen thank you sister ellis for that scripture and thank you sister kent for that wonderful prayer Now we will have a selection by our combined choirs of Southern, followed by a greeting to our guests by Brother Vincent Bradley, and then we will have an introduction to our guest preacher by our very own Dr. Dante L. Hickman.
I'm on my way. Come on, give God praise. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. How we celebrate today the Lord's goodness and his mercy, his favor in our lives. This is our sixth service for the day, and we're no ways tired of giving God praise. Are you glad to be here tonight? Come on, are you glad to be here tonight? I want you to know, ushers, that Sheila left the pulpit of her own volition. She ain't want to sit up here with us no more. She, I said, you leaving us? She said, I'm gone. I said, you don't want to stay? She said, absolutely not. She got up out of here. Amen. But what a wonderful job uh, she has done. Amen. All of our ushers and the way in which you have served on today so faithfully throughout the day and the scrumptious meal that everyone dined on. Thank you so much for your hospitality. It is preaching time in the house. Amen. And we praise God that we have a wonderful preacher uh, in our midst that I have been blessed and fortunate uh, to have known all of my ministry career. Tomorrow I will celebrate uh, 26 years of being in the preaching ministry. And I share that because it was this preacher that afforded me my first opportunity after having preached my initial sermon at the Gillis Memorial Church to preach at a prayer breakfast at the Shiloh Christian Community Church under his pastor, Dr. Jimmy Baldwin. This preacher that I am introducing uh, has been in the ministry now for 33 years. And he barely looks above 33 years of age. Amen. We praise God for him and for his wife, Naomi, who is here today. And they have been married for 20 glorious years, and the Lord has blessed their union together. Uh, Dr. Gary Johnson organized the Faith Christian Worship Center over 20 years ago, and he is continuing to grow and thrive in that particular ministry. And the Lord uh, has not caused him to settle yet. He's continuing to pursue uh, his education and his Master of Divinity degree. He is five classes away from graduating. From the Virginia Union Theological Seminary there in Richmond, Virginia. I am just so appreciative that he accepted the invitation to come and to preach in this most auspicious occasion, 85 and 65 and two years of serving as doorkeepers in the Lord's house. And I know that we're in for a real blessing on this evening, a word uh, that will not just be good, but will do us some good. This preacher of whom I introduce is none other than Reverend Gary Johnson Sr., pastor of the Faith Christian Worship Center, the best looking pastor on the west side of Baltimore. I don't know what it is, but people love them red bone preachers, amen. After, after the choir will have blessed our hearts uh, in another selection, they'll prepare us for the word of God. We'll be blessed by none other than Reverend Gary Johnson, pastor of Faith Christian Worship Center. Put your hands together and thank God for Kim.
Would you be so kind and grab your neighbor by the hand? Let's pray. O oh Lord, open thou my eyes that I might behold wonderful things from your word. Amen. 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 Come on, if you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, put your blessed hands together and give God some praise. Come on, if that was for me, that would be just fine. Come on, give him some praise. I'm talking about the one who woke you up this morning. Talking about the one who started you on your way. Put good shoes on your feet and joy in your heart. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I jumped up here real quick. Uh, I said, if I don't jump up here, these jokers going to drive me crazy with that great music. Lord, have mercy. That's some good, good music. Amen. I know y'all been blessed by it, uh, but I am, I am grateful uh, to be here uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ here at the Great Southern Baptist Church. Amen. Give yourselves a hand. I'd be sitting home. Uh, seeing Dr. Hickman up there preaching, I'm saying, Lord, uh, speak to his heart and let him invite me here. And, and God always answer my prayers. <laughs> Amen. I'm here uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ today. And uh, Dr. Hickman is one of my favorite persons in, in all the world. I really mean that. He's such a wonderful, wonderful man of God. 
thank God that God uses him to give me some exposure today. Amen. And so God bless you. I, I'm here with my wife. Where's my wife? Where's she? Hey, baby. Stand up. She used to have black hair. Good God Almighty. And Dr. Hickman, I grabbed her the other day and I said, oh, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't know that was you. You look strange. She looked good. Amen. She looked good. All right, I'm going to get ready to preach, but she looked good. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for all of those persons who come here uh, from Faith Christian Worship Center. God bless you as well. Amen. Uh, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture uh, found in the book of Psalms. Psalm 84 verse 10. Uh, I'm learning to make sure you do your best to preach to the occasion. Amen. And so Psalm 84, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Uh, Psalms 84, verse number 10. Uh, if it is the order of the house to stand, uh, you may stand for the reading of God's word. Psalm 84, verse 10. Uh, when you found that portion of scripture, would you please respond by saying amen? amen. Uh, here is the word of the Lord according to the New Living Translation. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than to live the good life in the home of the wicked. Uh, this is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. I want to thank God again for uh, Dr. Hickman and First Lady Hickman. God bless you. We've come this evening to celebrate with our friends here at Southern Baptist Church on their annual Usher's Day program, a time that has been set aside to honor and appreciate the diligence and work that those on this ministry have been given. Uh, before we go any further, I have encountered a question that has arrested me. And that question is, why do you want to be an usher? Why take the abuse, the smart remarks from Negroes, the uncooperative behavior of some mean, nasty, cantankerous church folks? I want to know this evening just what is it that makes a person put themselves in this type of situation. It is not because of fame or fortune, uh, nor is it because of money or being seen. I wonder this evening as I look around at these faithful, friendly, and fantastic ushers, just what makes a person want the job of an usher? Uh, first of all, in order to answer these questions, uh, let's take a look at what an usher does. Uh, what is the definition of an usher? According to the Webster Collegiate Dictionary, an usher is someone who escorts people into their seat. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that it is such that it is not this simple of a definition for someone whose job is so complex. I wonder as we look at an usher, do we only see them as seat finders? I must admit that an usher in your church is much more than a seat finder. They are meters and greeters to our service. They are representatives of Jesus Christ who meet people 
on a personal level, yeah, who meets people on a personal level, basis, uh, uh, they are first to arrive in church and they are the ones who smile, warms, and welcomes the place. But how come oftentimes they get most disrespected than anybody? As a farmer prepares the soil for planting, so does an usher help prepare uh, the proper environment that is conducive for genuine worship experience. They are the ones who keep things running and in order. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 40, let all things be done in decency and order. It is the usher's job to make sure and see to it that the service are being ran orderly and without disturbance. But you do know it can get difficult when you're around people who think they know everything. If someone needs seating, the usher finds a, a one in a timely fashion. If someone needs assistance, the usher provides that assistance. If someone is disturbing the service, it is the job of the usher to correct the problem. And sometimes, y'all, you've got to tell people even when they don't like it. You've got to tell people, hey, you need to chill. You need to be a little quiet. There are certain things you can't do in here because this is the house of the Lord. Your job is a complex job. Seem like nobody wants your job because everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be on the pedal stool. But the Bible says I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Your job as an usher, you've got to learn how you've got to learn how people react. Do I have a witness? You've got to be careful uh, at letting people in and out of service because everybody coming in the house uh, doesn't have the order of the house. And when they meet you, they ought to meet order. The ushers does this job even when people are not receptive so I ask you again why be an usher that, that is the relevant question here why is it that you are an usher and let's take a close look at Psalm 84 verse 10 uh, notice what it says again a single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God uh, than to live the good life in the home of the wicked in this verse of scripture we see Dr. Hickman at least two reasons why usher uh, the first reason why you ought to usher because it's your ministry. Yeah, that, that's it. It's your ministry. Uh, the usher's manual by Leslie Perrot informs us that any act of Christian service which helps direct men and women into fellowship with Jesus Christ is a ministry. Ah, y'all, look, you ought to usher because it's your ministry. It, it's not a job. See, some folks like a job, but in the kingdom of God, God is interested in ministry because if you got a job, only reason why you do what you do is because you get a check. But in ministry, anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you got to do things and you ain't going to get a pat on the back. Do I have a witness? An usher is ministry. The problem oftentimes is in the church of Jesus Christ, a whole lot of people want to do stuff because they want to be seen. They, 
They want to preach because they want to be seen. And they only preach one week and now God called them the pastor. It's a job for them. God is looking for somebody who can take what they do as ministry. And y'all do know that sometimes in ministry, y'all, you've got to deal with some folks. You've got to put up with some stuff. And sometimes you want to slap the you know what out of people. But if it's ministry, you got to hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle how dare you come up in here and dog me out because I'm an usher and I'm doing my ministry and all I'm trying to do is help you be better this is my ministry and listen y'all when you usher and you got the motive that it is your ministry God will bless you real good God will make a way out of no way. Do I have a witness up in here? Have you ever been doing your job and folks got on your last nerve but just a little talk with Jesus made everything all right. Somebody declared that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. If when you give the best of your service, God will. You want to know why I usher? I usher because it's my ministry. It's what I've been called to do. And the problem is too many people are in positions that they are, look, haven't been called. <laughs> Ain't nothing like seeing somebody in a position that they've been called to. They do it with the right attitude. They do it with joy on their heart. They march like they the only one here. Do I have a witness? And when the storms of life come your way, you can hang on in there. You don't give up on God because he has never given up on you. It's about ministry. Ain't about glory. It ain't about, look, how long you've been doing what you do. It's about ministry. Nothing like seeing somebody do what they've been called to do. Too many people are out of position. But thank God for ushers. Ah, uh, you can't tell me ushers are not anointed. You, y'all don't believe you can be an usher if you're not anointed. All the stuff you deal with, you gotta be anointed to do what you do. I ain't going to be for you long. Look, well, the first thing why you ought to be an usher is because why you usher? Because it's about ministry. People come in this door, they're going to be broken, battered, and defeated. And if you stand at that door with a mean, cantankerous spirit, they're going to look, I ain't coming up in there. God needs some ushers who got a good spirit even when hell breaking out in their life. Do I have a witness? And all y'all know in here right now that you came here and when you came here, you wasn't always feeling good. But God provided for you and you stood up at that door, stood up at that wall, look, felt like you were going to fall apart. But you stood there and God blessed you and God made a way for you. I believe when you usher and usher well, God provides for your family. God will look, bless your family. God will bless everything you lay your hands to because it's a blessing to serve God out of your ministry. But secondly, Dr. Hickman, we see here, first of all, he says, uh, why you ought to usher? Usher because it's your ministry. If it ain't your ministry, don't do it. Because all you're going to do is hurt the church. If it ain't your ministry, get off of it. I believe, no, look, I don't, look, I believe you don't fail in ministry. You just find where you don't fit. And some of us don't fit everywhere. Do I have a witness? Some people can't walk with me. Some people can't be in my space. They don't fit. Some people want to get in your space to bring you down. Oh, well, that's another sermon. All right. But, 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 but make sure. What you doing, what you are doing is ministry. Secondly, I want you to see why you ought to usher. First of all, because it's ministry. But secondly, because he's your master. 
ministry, but secondly, because he's your master. Listen, it says, uh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise, right? He says, and then he goes to say, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. So what you do, you ought to make it personal. Did y'all hear that? Look, 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 the psalmist declares, he is my God. I I usher because, listen y'all, I usher because he's my master. I don't know about y'all, God's been good to me. God has provided for me. And when I look back over my life, I know it hasn't been nobody but God who brought me through the dark days of my life. Do I have a witness up in here? As you usher and make him your master, he will see you through the dark days of your life. I remember my mother passing away, 62 years old, of cancer, died. But because he was my master, uh, God made a way for me out of nowhere. Had to stand up and eulogize my mother. But because he was my master and because the Lord has his hands on people who love him and serve him. Guess what, y'all? He gave me power to get through. Not after that, not long after that, my sister dies of HIV. But because he's my master, God will take care of you all I'm trying to tell somebody is do the best you can Uh, love God with all your heart mind and soul and when trouble come your way listen y'all he will make a way out of no way no sooner than that my brother died a vicious death here in Baltimore somebody killed him to the point where they didn't even look couldn't even tell what he looked like but because he's my master hey because the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me look y'all he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters and yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death he restores my soul can I talk to somebody goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life if you make him your master while you're serving him if you make him your master while you're marching for him if you're making him your master while you're lifting up your hands for him I tell you God God will take care of you. I may not be the best at anything, nor have the best of anything. And sometimes I feel like I'm the least of all, but I know someone who has everything and that someone is my everything. What's his name? His name is Jesus. Somebody called him the lily of the valley the bright and morning star. I declare today that whatever you need, God's got it. If you usher and usher well, he'll make a way out of no way. He'll lead you, he'll guide you, he'll put pep to your step, joy in your heart. He'll do for you what you couldn't do for yourself. He will make a way out of no way. Hang on in there. Keep on marching, keep on walking, keep on trusting. And if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior is come, be not dismayed. If men don't believe you, hang on in there, hang on in there. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy. please but the more you talk I'm gonna stay on my knees I'm gonna usher I'm gonna march I'm gonna still love you I'm gonna still do the work of God why because that's what I've been called to Why usher? Why? Because it's my ministry. 
D don't play a hate on me because I know my ministry. I I'm, I'm good with me. Why Usher? Because it's my ministry. Why Usher? Because he's my master. And if he's your master, he will help you deal with any situation that comes through that door. And you'll be able to stand and smile. And they won't understand. They've been mean and nasty. And they won't understand why you're still smiling. Why Usher? Because it's my ministry. Why Usher? Because he's my master. Thank you for allowing me to share. This joy that I have, oh, the world. Oh, this joy I have. I'm singing this joy. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. You know the world didn't give it. Say it one more time. This joy, this joy that I have. That with this joy, Lord, oh, this joy, clap your hands for the word of God. This man of God preached a wonderful word to us on why it is that we serve at the Lord's door. God knows it's got to be the hardest task, the hardest ministry in the kingdom of God. But thank God for those who have been called to it and realize who is the one that chose them to do it. And he is the one that sustains you through it and blesses you beyond even your imagination. We celebrate that word and we celebrate Pastor Gary Johnson for how he blessed us on this anniversary. As we stand together all over the church, there may be someone here who has never invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart to save you. Listen, being saved does not exempt you from mean, nasty people. But somehow it fortifies you against the wiles of the devil. If you're here this afternoon, perhaps you've been invited by somebody. Perhaps you just walked in because you saw that the door was open. Whatever the reason that you are here this afternoon, you can leave better than when you came. Pastor, I need a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you excuse yourself from wherever you are? Come down any one of these aisles. Give me your hand, give God your heart. Perhaps. You know the Lord and you love the Lord, but you're looking for a church home where you can spiritually mature. I want to invite you to become a part of our family of faith on the heels of that powerful sermon. Would you come? Lord, the world, I'm a witness that to this joy. Come on, clap your hands one time. Clap your hands one time. This love that I have, this love that I have, yes, the world. Oh, this love, yes, the world. Oh, the world didn't give it to me. your hands just clap in the joy of the Lord come on musicians God with a 
uplifted voices. Come on, ring it out. This joy. seats for a moment. Is uh, Vincent Brantley in the sanctuary? Is Vincent still up here? Where's Vincent? He went downstairs. Lord, I got up just as quick as the pastor got up. And when I went out, they said, Pastor, you forgot the usher to do the greeting. I said, Lord, you do know my 45th birthday is this month. I'm getting older now. And stuff is just slipping away in my mind. Amen. Some of y'all looking at me saying, child, live for about 40 more years some other stuff some other stuff gonna, gonna slip <laughs> lord help me jesus <laughs> oh man i wanted vincent i wanted to hear vincent talk at the mic he coming amen come on vincent we waiting on you and while we're waiting we're going to prepare to worship the lord through our giving man gary johnson preaches with integrity and with a fresh spirit while he was preaching i was like i was like his preaching is just so fresh the spirit just come through so clean amen and god knows i needed that man what is that you drinking it looked good it's, it got ice cubes rolling around in it what is that doc is it is, is it one drink or two just be, be careful it's one, it's one drink. All right. All right. I got to get some of that. Is that some of that a car? The who? By five. Yeah. See, Gary, get that kind of estranged stuff you just can't find at the corner store. Amen. All right. Hey, Vincent. Look, man, I didn't even know. I got up too fast. Come on and greet the people. Give, give Vincent a hand. All right, good afternoon. Well, all our guests visiting with us for the first time, please stand. All guests visiting us with the first, for the first time, please stand. All right. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Dante Hickman, his family, our leadership and discipleship here at Southern Baptist, we welcome you. And uh, for anyone, now I know it's a lot of ushers here visiting today, but anyone who's looking for a church home, uh, please consider us a church where you can be encouraged and enlightened. So, so uh, again, on behalf of everyone here at Southern Baptist Church, we welcome you. We welcome you for celebrating the ushers' anniversary today, and you may be seated. Thank you. Well, Vincent probably going to do his initial sermon in about nine months. Come on, get in the ministers and training class, Vincent. Been trying to make him a deacon. He won't take it. He's just happy to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. That's his ministry. Amen. And, and can cook, too. Where will we be in our picnics without Vincent Bradley? Thank you so, so very much. Thank you so much, ushers. Thank you for another great ushers anniversary amen celebrate the ushers thank you for your commitment and your faithfulness certainly your dedication throughout the year not just in uh, all of the services that we have here at this church but all of the events and uh, notices that we go on outside of the church we appreciate so much your efforts and your diligence to serve the people of God as well as this servant for the kingdom of God. Amen. And our ushers are faithful and our senior ushers uh, do what they can to be present and uh, participant and fully available into the service of the Lord. You cannot take for granted the service of 
the ushers and the kingdom of God. And so we thank you. I think we ought to all put our hands together and celebrate. Is the president in the room? Collins, is Collins up here? Come on, Collins. This is the most humble man in the church. This is one of the most humble brothers in the church that has to lead the ushers of the church and he does it with such humility and kindness and a wonderful spirit. And I want him to come and give us a word of remark. Come on, give, clap your hands and thank God for him. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Pastor Johnson for the wonderful word he gave today. And I also would like to... And I would also like to thank the choir. We got the best choir in the Baltimore City. And I can't forget Sister Benz. I don't know what we do without Sister Ben. And I also want to thank Leden Hall for being our host us. I'd like to thank everyone to help us celebrate our anniversary. Thank you. And come again next year, please. What y'all sitting there for? Let's go home. Come on. <laughs> act like, act like y'all want to do something else. Amen. We've been blessed today. Thank everybody for your participation in this service. Oh. And now may the God of grace and glory bless you. May he surround and sustain you with his presence and with his power. Now, henceforth, and forever, together we sing. say praise God for those of you who continue to support the work of ministry in our church through your giving. Those of you who have been giving, you have been making a difference and you've been keeping our church alive and moving forward to the glory of God even over this past year. I ask that if you'd like to give, that you do so on our website at southernbaptistchurch.org. You can download the Givelify app, find our church and our address, which is on the screen, and you can give there. Or you can text the word give to the number that's on the screen, and you can give spiritually as well as securely as you follow the prompts. Please know you can mail in, call in, or drop off your gifts to the church. And as you give, you are giving as unto the Lord, and God loves a cheerful giver. God bless you real, real good.